using a water jet cutout sheet for a knife shop window. William Hovey Smith, 2016. I'm Hovey Smith, the owner of a new company, Hovey's Knives of China. And what we did is to take ancient Chinese patterns and make modern cooking knives out of them that are as effective or more effective than any in use today. As a result, we have cutout sheets, which are of stainless steel, and we used one of these to make a window for our shop. Now this shop window was made up by me and installed, and here we go and tell you about it. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman, and I'm the owner and founder of a new company, Hovey's Knives of China. And what we have done is taken ancient Chinese designs, some perhaps 3,000 years old, and used these as inspiration to make modern cooking knives that are equal or better than any in modern use. Now, here is one of our smallest. This happens to be our caterer's friend. And this is one of our largest, our cabbage and duck chopper. The preparatory steps consisted of cutting the spruce two by fours to length, making two 20 millimeter deep cuts in the spruce with a skill saw to provide a shelf for the steel and glass to rest upon, and making cuts on the end of the spruce 2x4s to allow them to be glued and screwed together instead of the dovetail joints that are usually used. These knives have many unique attributes of which I have explained in individual videos before. What this video is about is about this window behind me. When we produce these knives, uh, we make them with water jet cuttings from stainless steel. And here is the sheet left over after we have cut out our knife blanks. And you can see the individual outlines of the blanks. Now this is in itself decorative. And so what I've done is taken the cutout sheet which would otherwise be waste product and made a window out of it. And the following will take you through exactly how I did it. Now if I were to rate the quality of this work on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being the worst and 10 being the best, my own individual efforts would rate about a 3. Yeah, uh, I'm not a good craftsman when it comes to putting together windows. First time I've tried it, I made a tremendous number of mistakes, and uh, I want to tell you about some of these so that you don't make them. Uh, basically, the effect is excellent. I like what we did, particularly for a knife shop. If you are doing any kind of industrial production and using this water jet cutting, and you have interesting cutout sheets left, yeah, think about framing them up and using them as decorative windows or screens even, depending on the size of the sheet. Uh, there is not enough metal left for these to be really rigid and freestanding without some sort of framing. Uh, they could be hung all right just up on nails, but are better put in a frame. And what we have used on the back side here is plexiglass rather than glass. We found two millimeter glass sheets too thin and too fragile and they did not uh, survive the handling. I broke one in the process. Uh, we also did the framing somewhat wrong and that we cut the members in the wrong way. But nonetheless, we've got it all set in. I had a piece of old plank here that was left over from an old door from over 200 years ago and so that we use as framing and I'm going to stain this white wood on the inside which is spruce and so the end result will be a quite decorative window in our shop. We now have our frame but it's in no way tied together. I just have the pieces laid out and we made several mistakes. Uh, one are these cutouts right here on the corners. 
these should have been alternated between the two pieces. In short, the top piece should have been inlet on the bottom so they would flush here and flush here and nest together and I could fasten them together right here. But I made that mistake of cutting them all on the same side and so I'm not able to do that. Now I have my sheet over here and we're just going to lay it in and see how it fits. Well, here we go for the fitting. See how we did. bottom are okay. But these sides need to come in at least an inch. We now see a tri-fit of our piece of sheet metal screen in our frame and we can take a closer look and see how we're doing. Since this is going to be in a wall and everything is going to be built around it, absolute plumb and square is not necessary but desirable. Because one thing you must have is that the glass itself must fit over this. Now we still do have good amount of clearance between the top of the metal and the wood here. So we did allow sufficient clearance for the glass to lay on the top of this. So now uh, we're going to try fit the glass. We'll handle this glass as infrequently as you possibly can. First off, it's heavy. And secondly, the more frequently you handle it, the greater your chance of breaking. There's not another sheet in town. So this is it, folks. Well, the next day we're a little bit further along with our window framing. We now have the frame done. And what you see in there now is plexiglass instead of glass. So we have the frame, the cutout steel parts have been shoe gooed into the frame to tack them there a little bit. You notice those scab plates on the corners? I'm going to screw those in and that will give some stability while it's actually being mounted in the wall. In addition, I may put a plank on the other side. Turning this window over is going to test the strength of this frame and see if it's going to hold together at all. So this is really a critical step here. Lift it gently on this side. Okay, it's coming up as a unit, which is good. Okay, so far so good. All right. I'm going to have to move it here. other side. Now 
Well, with that limited movement, it felt solid. But I'm going to go ahead now and caulk this side, which is going to be in the be the exterior, and put on this temporary reinforcing plank. Now with the bracing and scab plates, uh, this is an assembly strong enough now that I can confidently have the contractors lift and they're going to brace it up further as they actually set it into the wall. But uh, yeah, my task is now basically done. I'm going to clean up some of this caulk a little bit and that'll be about it from my end. Uh, from here on out, uh, yeah, it's pretty well up to them. If you want to participate with us at Hobie's Knives and actually make some of this interesting cutting-edged cutlery, uh, like we have here, this is our offset fish and sushi knife, uh, there are a couple of ways you can do it. If you sell our custom knives, uh, we offer a 25% commission on sales, unusually large. If you wish to actually make these knives, you can come here to Whitehall and we will give you an internship and teach you about these knives, teach you how to market them, teach you how to make them, uh, teach you how to use them. And then you'll be able to more effectively sell. And if you sell a knife that you make, you keep 95% of the retail sales and we take a 5% royalty. These sorts of arrangements are available and at the end of the video uh, there will be some contact information. But now, this is Hobie Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. This black and white profile better shows the decorative elements of the screen. Now this is a logo that I'm going to be using on some of my knives and other products. These are still pictures from some of the 15 videos that I have of these knives when they are actually used in cooking situations. Now I will have stainless steel cutout sheets available for sale. Some of these are professionally framed. I also have already framed some saw blades with cutouts that will be covered in another video. For more information on how to become a salesperson or a knife maker, you can contact me at the following address. For more information, you can go to www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.